Today we're in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland, and it's all about the best food in this video today. Tamaki Makoto is our hometown. We can't wait to share the hidden food gems this city has to offer. Tamaki Makoto, Auckland is one of the world's most culturally diverse cities with their food scene to match. Over the next few weeks, we'll be exploring Auckland's food culture and showcasing the diversity in cuisine that can be experienced in Aotearoa, New Zealand's biggest city. In this video, we take you into the kitchen of a restaurant serving up delicious traditional Nepali food, chow down on dishes that transport us right back to the streets of Indonesia, and show you where to find one of Auckland's tastiest sandals. We're taking you on a round-the-world food tour via Auckland's Best Eats. Hit subscribe and get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena. And we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. excited to be filming in Auckland, New Zealand's biggest city and also our hometown. Auckland is such a diverse city, over 200 different ethnicities call Auckland home, so the food scene is epic. There is so much choice in cuisine here, we can't wait to get eating. This video is going to showcase a few of our favourite restaurants here in Auckland and our first stop is just up ahead. We are going for some Nepali food at this place called Tama Eatery. So let's go in and get a taste of Kathmandu. The smells as you walk into the restaurant are so strong and delicious. So this restaurant specializes in Nepali food. Now Nepali cuisine is very diverse and this restaurant spe specializes in a lot of just general Nepali favorites as well as Newari food and the Newari people are the indigenous inhabitants of Kathmandu. So you'll find a lot of uh, dishes that you'll find in Kathmandu at this place. Now the guys have said that we can have a little nosy on in the kitchen so he let's head on in and see what's cooking up. Hello! Hi! How are you? <laughs> so the dream team have rapidly disappeared because the cameras are rolling um, but Sorry. oh here comes Deep. So, <laughs> Deep is half of the owner operator team at Tama Eatery and he's actually just preparing some momo. So momo are dumpling, one of the most popular dishes in Kathmandu and these guys do an epic version. He's just been showing me how to fold momo and like the folding technique is difficult. Like we've tried, um, we filmed a, a, a video while we are in quarantine where we tried to make Momo and our folding was absolutely atrocious. <laughs> so watching these guys at work is awesome. So they've got lots of different type of dumplings on the go and they're just doing a whole lot of prep for service which will start soon. the pork with the jolacha, the lamb with the chili, lamb with chili, yeah, and then the chicken with fry. Whoa! Thank you. The smells in this kitchen, or the delicious smells in this kitchen, I should say, have amplified a thousand times because we have put in a huge order of momo and another dish, a Nawari specialty. And the guys are just cooking up our food now, and man, it smells delicious in here. Um, over here, actually, is our sakua, which is cooking up, and sakua is meat that's traditionally roasted over fire and it's just been marinated in mustard oil we've been told and you can really smell that mustard oil in the air. Oh, I'm so excited about this meal. We were just treated to a spectacular display of meat being popped over the flame and just being roasted up. So the sakua which we've ordered is lamb and it's been marinated in spices and that mustard oil and in Nepal it's traditionally roasted over coals or, or fire and so that's how these guys have recreated. It's over the gas stove but they've got that smokiness going down. You can really smell it in the air. We 
have ordered up an epic feast. So we have got Momo, the Nepali dumplings, ordered three ways. So this here is the traditional method of steaming. So this is a pork Momo steamed and it has covered, it is covered with this beautiful Jol Acha. So that's that soupy sauce there. This here is the chili momo, so lamb momo which had been deep fried and then coated in this chili tomato capsicum sauce. This here are the deep fried momo and they've just served with a uh, chili uh, tomato dipping sauce and that's a chicken filling. And then this here is the Nawari specialty. So this is sekua, so sekua lamb and it's been marinated in spices and mustard oil then it was cooked over that flame like you saw in the kitchen before it's been served with um, coriander and mint chutney some pickles some dipping sauce and then this really colorful uh, pile uh, here is chatapate which is a um, puffed rice snack or salad definitely enough talking it is time for eating and i'm going to go straight in with these steamed momo so the really traditional ones with the Joel Archer, these are pork. I'm gonna spoon the Archer all over the top. This takes me straight back to being on the streets of Kathmandu eating these. Mm. Oh wow. Oh. oh, they're full of flavor. So the base of that Archer is sesame. So. It's got a beautiful punch of sesame, a creaminess from that, and there's some chili in there as well. So it gets a beautiful hit of spice, but nothing too crazy. And the momo is so good. The skin is so um, light and soft. Mm, and that filling, look at that. So nice and loose. So onion, pork, coriander, but not really solidly packed. And I really like biting them in half like that because you can drown them in the archer and it gets inside. Oh, mm. oh they are not going to last long at all. Now I want to dive into these ones. These are intriguing me. So they're lamb momo, deep fried, but then put straight into the pot where they've created the sauce with ketchup, um, chili sauce, ginger, things like that, and just Coated. So instead of having the fried momo with a side sauce, it is just coated on the lamb momo. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. That is good. Oh. They've used ketchup as the tomato sauce, so it's got a, a real sweetness to it. But then a massive hit of chili as well from the chili sauce. And because it's deep fried, the skin of the momo would have been crunchy, but it's gone into the sauce, lapped up some of that moisture, and it's it's not gone totally soft, so it's still got a tiny bit of texture, but it's not crunchy anymore. It's just solid, but covered in this beautiful sauce. These are delicious, and the lamb filling is a strong flavor, so you get a beautiful hit from the, the lamb inside. I think it's so cool that in little old Auckland you can get traditional Nawari food. So the food of the indigenous people of the Kathmandu Valley. So I'm going to dive into this sekua. So this is the mutton which is marinated in a bunch of spices so like cumin and coriander ginger garlic and whatnot and then is roasted over fire mm. Mm. wow it's so good it's got a beautiful smoky flavor it's a very dry meat so you can see there's not really any sauce there's no um, sort of fat oil dripping out of it and it's very dry but it is packed full of that spice so you can really taste that cumin you can taste that mustard oil that it's marinated in that is unreal now this riot of color here so this is the chatapate and this is 
traditionally served on the streets of Kathmandu as a street food. So you'll see street vendors pushing carts around and they're serving this and they serve it in a paper cone. These guys have just served it on the side of the sakua. They've mixed in um, potato, there's peas, the rice puffs, these red onion, chickpea noodles. Mmm. Mmm. That is banging. It has got so much flavour and texture. It's crunchy, it's soft in the potato, it's tangy, it's juicy. You can taste lemon, there's a chilli, the cor fresh coriander, the juicy tomatoes. It is just a riot of flavour as well as colour. I'm going to dive into one of these babies. So these are the chicken momo and they're served deep fried with this uh, dipping sauce. So the dipping sauce is made out of roasted tomato, coriander, ginger, garlic and whatnot. Mm. 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 I'm loving every style of momo. They're all fantastic. And they're also unique and different. So this one has a great hit of onion. You can really taste that chicken. And the crispiness of the wrapper is great. It's got a real crunch and a little bit of a chew. The sauce too has a quite a mellow flavor. So it's not overpowering. You can really taste that meat filling. This has been sensational. We're gonna dive right in before it gets all cold. We're super pumped to share this next spot with you, another one of our favourites. And it's an Indonesian restaurant that serves up a whole range of Indonesian street food classics. It's just over the road here, so let's head in and get some sambal in us. <laughs> the smells in It's Java, so this is the name of the restaurant, It's Java, are delicious. So you walk in and you're hit with the smell of sambal, so that's in uh, chilli sauce. And I've just been having a look at the menu here and it is filled with Indonesian classics, so food that you can find all over Indonesia. So we've just got to make a choice and put our order in. Nasi kuning. And one bebek goreng madura. Thank you, yeah. The It's Java Kitchen is a tiny little space and what they churn out of this kitchen is nothing short of spectacular. The smells wafting up out of it is just incredible. So we've been watching um, ducks being fried, dishes being created, noodles in the wok and our dishes are actually now on our table and I'm so excited to get into this. So we've ordered two dishes. This here is the nasi kuning. So you've got this cone of yellow coconut turmeric rice with a ton of side dishes and then this here is one of their house specialties. This is bebek goreng, so it's all about this fried duck. It's served with tempeh, sambal and rice. I'm just admiring this golden ayam goreng or the fried chicken. So on this plate, let me talk you around the plate. We've got ayam goreng, fried chicken, cucumber, percadil, which is a potato patty. We've got shredded omelette, this here is tofu and tempeh. Tempeh, which is this one at the front here, is fermented soybean and it's cooked with chili and onion. Next to it is the peanuts and, in, and also some ikan bilis, which is deep fried anchovies. You can see those wee fish in there. We've got keropok, which are crackers, usually made out of cassava or tapioca starch. And then in the middle, rising up out of all of the side dishes, is the turmeric rice. So it is rice cooked with turmeric and coconut cream. So you can see um, how sort of um, shiny the rice is. That's from the oil of the coconut cream. Ooh, hoo, hoo, where to start? I think it's got to be with the fried chicken. So. Look at that, it's super juicy. Mmm. Mmm. Beautifully salted. So there's so much flavour in that uh, chicken. And it's nice and crispy. Mmm. Oh wow. Mm. 
Holy moly, that's good. It takes you right back to Indonesia. Those flavors, the rice has got such a rich flavor from that coconut cream. Oh, this is great. Let's try some of this tofu. Get a bit more of that chicken in, the, in here. Mmm. Mm. That is sensational. You know what it's time for though, I reckon. It's time for the sambal. So this is pedas gila. Pedas means hot and gila means crazy. And I have had this sambal before and man alive, it is dangerous. But you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's just get a huge heap of that onto some rice. Some more of those peanuts. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. My mouth is on fire. But in the best possible way, you've got to get into this if you like spicy, because that is ferocious. Oh, this is good. This sums up the joy of living in Auckland. So we've come down the road and around the corner from the Nepalese where we started this video. We're now having Indonesian and this is very traditional Indonesian just like the Nepalese we had. So this is what you get when you're in Indonesia. And the great thing about it's Java is it's run by a group of people. They're all from different parts of Indonesia and Indonesia is very diverse in its food. It's made up of thousands of islands. So the food is very different in all the different regions. So they have food from all across Indonesia, not just one region. And I've got the bebek goreng, so fried duck. So bebek is duck and goreng means fried, so fried duck. And look at it, so golden and beautiful, this duck. Oh, it's really soft to the touch. With some beautiful rice, we've got some little fried bits of tempeh. So tempeh like Sheena had in her dish, but uh, cooked very differently. And some awesome looking sambal on top, so some chili to pour all over the top of the dish. Let's rip straight into this duck. And I forgot to say the serendang on top, so this beautiful yellow stuff all over the top is coconut toasted with turmeric, and that is very fragrant. I'm gonna rip into this duck, and this should be super juicy, because as well as being deep fried, it's also marinated, then cooked in a steam oven, and then finished in the deep fryer. So there's that beautiful golden crispiness around the outside. I just want a whole lot of, of everything here I want heaps of this sambal, so I'm going to coat it in the sambal. Oh my god. Mm. Oh my god. Oh. The duck is so juicy. A little bit of a crispiness on the outside. And the sambal on top. Whoa. I've got the hiccups, but that sambal is not the pedas gilur that Sheena had. So that one is blow your pants off hot. This one is beautiful and spicy, but it's got a, a sweetness and a fragrance to it. So you can you can pile it on like I did. You know, I'm going to pile spoonfuls on top of there. I want to get a whole lot of the coconut, the rice this time, some tempeh. Mm. Oh, it takes you back to being on the streets of Indonesia. The flavors are so bang on. I, mean, I love this about Auckland that we can feel like we're being transported to countries we've traveled to via food. We are very lucky here with the amount of selection we get. And this food at It's Java is very, very good. We've now made our way across Auckland for our next stop. We ate at this place the other day, had their sandwiches, they blew our minds. This has been one of our favorite finds since we came back to Auckland because of COVID. So it's really nice to be back exploring all over the city, getting to try lots of different food. This place is amazing and I can't wait to show you guys. Young George do the best sandos. So sandos are a Japanese style sandwich. They do 
four kinds and we have ordered the beef and the chicken, both which we've had before and which are to die for. We've ordered a couple of coffees and the team have uh, allowed us into the kitchen. So we're gonna have a little nosy and see what's going down. Josh, who is the creator of these delicious sandals, and he is just putting together a beef sandal. So look at that. Look at that oozy cheese and that delicious looking beef, which has just been cooked on the hot plate. And then um, the chicken katsu sandal has just come out of the deep fryer and he's just about to compile that. good did these sandals look? So this here is the chicken katsu sandal. So we've got this huge piece of chicken thigh, which has been covered in panko crumbs, deep fried until golden and crispy, cabbage, a ton of special sauce, and then we've got some veggie chips around the side. And then this here is the beef sandal. So we've got a smashed beef patty, two types of cheese, uh, some lettuce, a special sauce, and then it's been sprinkled with perhaps a little chili, um, a chili over the top. <laughs> Let's dive into this katsu sandal. <laughs> Look at that. So this huge piece of chicken thigh is busting out of the bread. Mm. Holy moly, that is so good. Now I just want to talk to you firstly about why it's called a sandal. So in Japan, they use a special type of bread called shokupan. And the bread is just like this. It's very sweet, it's light as air. So when you bite through it, it's super soft. And then this sandwich is epic. So the chicken thigh is cooked to perfection. It's very juicy. You got the crunch from the lettuce and then they've been super liberal with that special sauce. So it's a very creamy sauce. It's got things like uh, mustard and gherkins in it. So it's a little bit tangy. Oh. Mm. Thomas and I are going to be fighting over this. It is delicious. And look at this beef sandwich. The cheese is spewing out the side. I've had this before and I fell deeply and madly in love the first time I had it. So I'm very happy to be back, share it with you. And this is very reminiscent of something from a rather large fast food chain, a Big Mac, but it's like a Big Mac turned up to 11. Oh. Mmm. Oh my god. Mmm. I'm coming. Mmm. Man, that is good. The beef is very well seasoned, so you get a lovely saltiness from it, which brings out the flavor of the beef. So you can really taste the patty. It is high quality New Zealand beef. You can really taste that super little crunchy crispness of the lettuce, that sauce that's all over it, double cheeses never a bad thing and some fresh little onion through there and then there's that little sprinkle of sort of chili powder on it. it just gives it a tiny tickle of heat and we're talking to Josh in the kitchen he said he's been heavily influenced by travel in Hong Kong and Korea Taiwan those sorts of places and it's so reminiscent of sandwiches you find in those countries it is so well put together oh my god mm. Mm. I can't tell you how good this is. I mean, I'm covered in special sauce. It's dripping off my fingers. And damn, I am happy. I love this about Auckland. You can just find all these interesting, unique things. People doing such cool stuff. And the coffee is great too. This has been one heck of a day of eating. <laughs>